go to Carl, who is at Winmalee this morning, where so much of that damage has happened with all of those fires. Carl? Yeah, it's been an incre incredibly busy 12 hours here, Lisa. I know that um, throughout New South Wales there have been busy patches for firefighters, but certainly at the base of the Blue Mountains, uh, it's been incredibly busy for firefighters. They're all so exhausted. A number of them have come off in excess of 12 hours uh, fighting those fires uh, all around here, around, especially around the Springwood area. They've come in here and they're telling tales of how difficult the circumstances were yesterday for them in fighting those fires with those incredibly strong winds and those tinder dry conditions and that low humidity, very, very difficult uh, for them. I want to bring you up to speed with where things are at this morning, though, because there are a number of areas of concern, even though the conditions have eased uh, through the course of the night in terms of temperature. Um, the situation at the moment is that 1,600 firefighters are operating and battling more than 100 fires across New South Wales. That's in excess of 100. It's incredible, isn't it? 34 of those we understand this morning as we go to air are out of control. And now the ones of most concern are around us, uh, just up the road at Springwood. Uh, Lithgow is a concern. Uh, Heatherbray, uh, Port Stephens, uh, north of Newcastle is a concern and uh, there is uh, a lot of concern also on uh, Wyong on the central coast. We'll go there live certainly uh, soon but um, the threat there is for homes uh, that may come under threat a little bit later. Residents are told it's too late to leave. If you live in Wyong it's too late to leave and you've got to seek shelter in your own home. A um, hundred homes may have been lost across uh, New South Wales and, and dozens and dozens of them where we are and they'll get out there to assess the damage in the next couple of hours but it could be days before that damage is fully known. Overnight, this was the epicentre of a blaze burning out of control in thick bush near Lithgow. A vital battleground as this uncontained fire is where authorities will focus their fight today. Volunteer and brigade crews worked through the night, dwarfed by the walls of fire still racing along the ridges around the town of Clarence. Today, it's burning towards the Bilpin Township and Mount Lagoon. For crews, vigilance, the code of survival, as they're forced to snake along twisting mountain roads to get to the flames. All too aware, they face the risk of being cut off. In Port Stephens, it was like heading into a war zone. A giant plume of smoke leads dozens of firefighters and police straight to the fire front. As the sun began to set, the wind changed direction in an instant, blowing fire front back in the direction of the Madawi Township. We've got a number of properties under threat. The fire is now heading towards Madawi. A number of units have been responded to this location, but unfortunately they're unable to get in here because of the firestorm. And now I think it's time we move. Firefighters frantically rush to get ahead of the fires and protect their homes. A convoy of trucks barely able to unroll their hoses before being forced to flee. Flames lapping at the gates of the area's electrical substation. As darkness closed in, so did the fire, strangling the road ahead. And all along the Madawi Road, fire truck after fire truck picked a property and dug in, protecting homes and lives. All units, all units. It's a reminder we are property protection only. Today, the focus shifts to Wyong, where there is an emergency warning for a small community, Nord's Wharf. The RFS says it's too late to leave now, but they've seen it early and believe they have the upper hand. Yeah, tough conditions and easing of the conditions overnight here, but uh, certainly there is a lot of concern for the Wyong area. We'll be live uh, to Wyong in uh, just a, a couple of minutes' time, but first I thought we'd get an update here at the base of the Blue Mountains with Jeff Lay, an old mate of mine uh, who's been fighting fires uh, with New South Wales uh, Fire and Rescue through the course of the night. Jeff, good to see you. Uh, can you explain to, to everyone at home who's watching this morning how tough it was yesterday afternoon and through the night? Yeah, Carl, we had some uh, pretty strong winds. And the problem is with these winds that uh, they create what we call ember attacks mm. on dwellings, and that's existing fires that uh, get hit by these winds, the embers spread anywhere. So we're getting indiscriminate 
uh, devastation in some of these streets on those outskirts. What you're saying is it's not necessarily the fire front, and we can see the smoke plumes from the fire front now, but it's the embers that uh, are launched with those uh, very high winds ahead, sometimes kilometres ahead, landing in separate areas um, of, of different communities, and, yeah. the, and, the, and the, the house goes up. Quite some you know, distance away from the original right. fire fronts. So what sort of damage have you seen in and around this, this area? Well, we've been down streets, Carl, where we've had dwellings untouched next to other dwellings totally lost uh, and cars burnt out, cars just parked out the front of houses gone where the, the house might be still okay. Besides that there's uh, bushland in that interface area that's just lit. Mm. So everything you can imagine. I know that uh, the conditions were, were almost perfect for a bushfire yesterday and, and incredibly unpredictable. Um, for you guys as firefighters, it's, it is dangerous when it, when it is so unpredictable, isn't it? Absolutely, because you, um, you're second guessing everything you're doing. Mm. Uh, you've always got to have um, like an escape route. Uh, you've got to look after your crew and there's power lines coming down, there's trees, power poles. Mm. So there's all these variables that can that can change at any time. I know preparation was key for all the residents here as well, and you've got to reiterate that, don't you, all the time that the preparation is key, and then get out before the fire front hits. Absolutely, a lot of people were stuck here with, and not being able to get out, um, wondering whether they should stay and look after their their property, but. It's, nothing's worth losing a life over. You were fighting also that fire at uh, Homebush uh, the other day as well, so you've been That's incredibly right. busy. Uh, we appreciate your time today and, um, and best of luck out there. We know that everyone's very tired, but we appreciate the job that you're doing. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. No drums Cheers. at all. We'll see you very soon, buddy. Um, let's go now to Wyong, uh, as promised, uh, to get an update on the situation up there in the central coast. Uh, Ellie Walsh is there for us this morning. Ellie, what have you got for us? Well, good morning, Carl. We're currently at the Lake Manmora Command Centre, but just further down the Pacific Highway here is an incredibly intense and fast-moving fire that's currently threatening the small township of Nords Wharf. There's about 50 properties that are under threat there this morning. Uh, there's about 10 fire crews there trying to contain that blaze. Now, residents were sent an emergency text message overnight telling them it was too late to evacuate, that they simply had to shelter inside their homes. Now, what's making these conditions worse is winds being whipped up um, and, and fanning those flames. Now, elsewhere, um uh, th there were a number of homes destroyed uh, in uh, Catherine Hill Bay. Uh, we're also told that a historic hotel went up in flames in Catherine Hill Bay as well, Carl. But of course, fire crews are waiting until first light uh, before they can really get out there and assess that damage, Carl. Yeah, same here as well. And, and as I said, uh, thank you for that, Ellie. And um, we'll come back to you through the course of the morning. But um, as Ellie mentioned, it is the first time that uh, firefighters and authorities are going to be able to get out and see the, the full extent of the damage. The, there are some reports up to 100 across New South Wales homes have been lost. And in this area alone, I was just talking to Jeff then, that there could be dozens and dozens of homes um, that, that have been lost. But they're getting out now. They're all um, travelling out now to try and assess the damage and also keep an eye on the fire front, which is burning not far from where we are, probably about a kilometre thick. Uh, plumes of smoke coming up there. Also some concern in the Southern Highlands. Uh, Lauren Denoli is there for us this morning. Uh, Lauren, good morning to you. Hi, Carl. Yeah, thankfully the conditions here aren't as bad. And this was after yesterday. We had an emergency rating, and that's thankfully been downgraded to an act and watch this morning. But even though the conditions are better, it hasn't been a quiet night for the 150 fireys that we've got on the ground. They've spent the night uh, controlling a small blaze in Bargo and uh, also uh, backburning and clearing some of the fire near the Hume Highway, which that had to be closed down yesterday. Um, over in Yandera, we had uh, an, ev an evacuation warning went out yesterday and the hundreds of residents there, they were forced to evacuate and they've since been allowed to return home and the RFS have told me that uh, there was no damage to any fires, there, any homes there rather, thankfully, just uh, several vehicles that were burnt out and I guess the focus for today really is taking advantage of these cooler and more uh, moderate weather conditions, Carl. Yeah, exactly. Um, even though the winds are still unpredictable. Lauren, thank you for that. We'll come back to you during the course of the show as well. Uh, let's get the news now with Georgie Gardner. Hey, Georgie.